I'm pretty sure I forgot a missile expansion back there as well. Yeah, I think it's that one in that curved room right there. I could have picked that up right when I was in that room, but I kind of forgot. I don't know, it's just kind of difficult, especially in a playthrough right like this where I'm trying to explain myself a bit more than usual. It's kind of difficult to play competently, uh, try to explain the game in a way that's satisfying for me, in a way that I feel like articulates my true feelings, and remember all the kind of like the secrets and the nuances and stuff like that. And speaking of kind of saying things that I don't think really represent what I truly think. I did mention, kind of towards the, I think it was the middle of the last episode right there, I kind of mentioned, like, the sexuality of Samus and how she's perceived as far as her character design is concerned, especially when it comes to Zero Suit Samus, and I kind of stated that the sexualization in this game could have been way worse, and that's not really what I meant to imply exactly. That kind of implies that I think she was sexualized in this game to begin with, and I'm just really not seeing it. I mean, this is a topic that... It's not really exclusive to Other M, really. It's just kind of a Metroid series issue as a whole, really. I wouldn't say it's exclusive to Other M, so I'm kind of... I'm kind of reluctant to dive into it right now, but I guess I'll do it since I kind of just brought it up in general. I don't think that Samus having larger breasts and, like, slightly wider hips in this game, as opposed to, say, like, Smash Brothers Brawl, really inherently makes her, like, a sexualized character. And uh, not alone like an overly sexualized character, like I've seen some criticism say right here, is I believe we have to get up here. Yeah, that's right. Now, I think it would be a different story, really, if she kind of paraded around, I guess. Yeah, this is gonna be right here. Kind of paraded around and she was, um, kind of in, like, clothing, like, skimpier than, like, the Zero Seed or something. Actually, let's go back for a sec, back to the proportions, actually. Like I said, I don't think the body proportions in this game are ridiculous when you compare it to something like Dead or Alive, or when you compare it to someone like Ivy from the Soul Calibur series. Yeah, if the breasts had been augmented to that size right there, yeah, that would kind of raise my eyebrow for sure. Like, I, I might have a bit of a problem with that, but like I said, I think the proportions of Zero Suit Samus in this game are very much realistic. I wouldn't say that they're, like, completely unrealistic or completely out there in the realm of possibility. In fact, I would say that I've actually seen quite a few women in real life that kind of have the same proportions right there, so I don't really have a problem with that. But like I said, I don't think that in and of itself would be inherently sexualized. I, now, I think, like, the opposite of that, like, the one that I would have a bit of an issue with is, like, if she spent a lot more time out of the suit and much more revealing clothing than the Zero Suit, if she showed a lot more skin, if there were, like, say, jiggle physics in this game, which there would absolutely be no need for, if there were, like, gratuitous shots, like, around, like, the chest and the, and the butt area, but that really doesn't happen in this game, at least not to, like, a gratuitous level. I think maybe there might be, like, one pan shot and, like, one cutscene later. It's, oh, great. More armadillos. These guys usually don't hunt alone, although I think this one actually is alone. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's see if I can missile it in the face. There we go. And then I think I'll be able to take it out with a badass finisher. Yeah. So yeah, if they had paraded her around, her around like that with like physics and gratuitous shots and just really stupid pans and stuff like that, yeah, I would say that Samus has perhaps been a bit over-sexualized. But as she's represented in this game, I don't think that's a problem. I mean, I wouldn't say that anything worse happens in here that hasn't really happened in any other Metroid game. And by that, I mean... Yes, from the very beginning, Samus has been treated as a very attractive character, a, a very sexy character, dare I say. I mean, let's not forget that in the very first Metroid, she had like a freaking pixel bikini, right? Like, that's something that really happened here, as that tentacle thing right there, I believe that actually originates from the Prime series, and can I just shoot it in the eye like the Prime series? I think we have to get it whenever it curls up uh, into the flower right there. Yeah, that's just gonna knock me all the way back down. Yikes. But yeah, since the very beginning, in the NES game is- Oh yeah, by the way, I love this music. I think this is a good example of, uh, the other M soundtrack doing a good job. When we're climbing up this spire right here. But ever since the first one, that yeah, whenever you beat the game fast enough, she would kind of take off more and more clothing. And granted, since the original on the NES, we haven't seen, like, Bikini Samus or something like that, or something kind of egregious like that. I, w I wouldn't even say that's egregious, really. Like, I wouldn't say a woman in a bikini is just, like, inherently, offensively sexualized or something like that, but that's kind of been a core facet of every Metroid game, so I guess if you do take issue with, like, Samus kind of traditionally being a sexy character, being an attractive character, and they even point this out in the manga, like, she is seen as attractive in the manga as well, as we pick up this not very hidden missile tank right here, but in the manga, like, a lot of, uh, men and I think it's just kind of, like, um, 
But like younger boys in like a training academy definitely see her as attractive. And you can see that with like a lot of official art as well. She is definitely designed to be kind of uh, traditionally attractive with the blonde hair, the blue eyes, the slender figure, stuff like that. So I guess you could make the argument that maybe that's a flaw of the Metroid series in its entirety. If you really find something like that offensive, I mean, I don't, but that's definitely not a problem exclusive to Other M. And I mean, and I'll just be brutally honest, I don't see it as offensive regardless. Maybe my views are old-fashioned and stuff like that, but I just don't see a woman that's kind of more feminine to be inherently over-sexualized and something to be offended about, especially when there are plenty of real-life women that kind of have the same proportions there. But okay, we have another point in fine segment. I don't really know if I'll get back to the sexual element or not. I've kind of said my piece here, but what we have to zoom in on are these guys right here. That's the first one where it can be really difficult to find what you're supposed to find right there. That's when they start getting a tad bit annoying, but the most offensive examples are yet to come. Oh god, it's just gross. And looks like that one got me right there. Probably could have dodged that right there, but okay. So, this fight right here, we're being sworn by these disgusting insectoid creatures. So, the power beam burst that we got earlier is going to be critical right here, so we just have to keep taking these guys down. You can take their wings out really easily, but then they kind of pop around like even more disgusting insects, so you gotta watch out. Oh, get out of the way right here. And I would say this is the first kind of real, um, well, not even that. We had like the blue, the purple tentacle monster thing right there uh, at the very beginning when we first met with the Space Marines and all that. I would say this is the first main boss of kind of uh, the Sector 1 Biosphere area right here. So it's a good de degree of challenge right here. Because it looks like we have flowers right here. And what you have to do is that you have to take these down via missiles. And you better do it pretty quickly, too. Let's go ahead and do that. Dodge out of the way if they get too close. Nice, nice, nice. But you can hit those flowers whenever they kind of recede back into their bulbs. So what happens is that they recede back into their bulbs, and then you have to take out all these disgusting insectoid creatures again. So what I like to do is kind of go in a clockwise or... Uh, counterclockwise direction doesn't really matter. And then just kind of save up your charge beam right here, and then just let it go whenever these things fall behind you. Then these things will come out, and hit them with missiles when you can. Uh, let's go ahead and dodge out of that. Let's see if I can hit this one. There we go. Dodge out of the way of this one. And those guys are back right there. Okay, that blower's still open right there, so I don't know if I can hit it. I'm going to try to make my way back over, taking down these annoying guys if I can. And I think we can do this right here. Nope, stay back. Okay. Now we have to get out of this thing right here. Yeah, I love how we can't do like a finisher right there, but we can knock him away. Oh, I've never seen that one before. Wow, she rips the freaking wings off. I am just getting swarmed right here. I've got to get some distance between me and these guys. Like I said, I would say this is the first uh, like really difficult boss that we have. Not the first really difficult part, but oh man, they're just going to keep swarming me. Okay, I should... Okay, this is a perfect opportunity. Let's turn around and get you right there. Oh god, it receded at the last second. Are you kidding me? Okay. Come out, come out. Okay, there we go. Well, that should be it. Dodge out of the way of that. Revealing. Oh god, it's gross. Oh man. Metroid does this stuff so well with like the disturbing insectoid metamorphic imagery and just, yeah. I mean, I love it for it. I love that it can really kind of handle that feeling of disgust, but I hate it at the same time. Yeah, you snuck up on me. Why did that do so much damage? My god. Okay, well, what we have to do is, of course, we have to missile this thing right in the center right here. And I'm just going to spam missiles and hope maybe we can take this thing down right now before more of those insectoids come back. Don't use it as a shield. Ah, crap. Empty missiles. Okay. Alright, so what I have to do is I have to get out of the way right here. I can do this, I can do this. Go ahead and unleash those guys right there so they don't bother me anymore. And here, we can do our emergency heal. Like that. Whew, okay. Yeah, that adds a, kind of another dimension of oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. I was one missile away from beating it too, jeez. But yeah, that automatic energy refill, you can only do it when you're about to die. So it's kind of like a life or death, a last second super panic ploy. It's another thing that kind of makes combat a lot more hectic on top of the needing to recharge your missiles. Which I should have done at the beginning of the fight. Ugh. Some creatures use the powers of others to capture their prey. Watching this disgusting beast, I felt as though it was feeding off my power as well. At the same time, a thought crossed my mind. That howl I heard earlier. Could this creature have been the source?
Samus, head to the biosphere test area in your current sector. There should be some important information about this facility in that exam center. The other members are en route. Quickly, go meet them there. Well, all of a sudden, the little guy right there doesn't look all too innocent. That was... Ugh, that was kind of grotesque. As I see with my little eye... Eh, just an energy part, not an actual energy tank. And I guess one more thing that I should say on the whole kind of, like, sexualization uh, issue... I don't even know if I can really call it a debate. Is these little pill bugs right here, you can only really kind of knock them over with the Morph Ball Bomb and then take them out with the Morph Ball Bomb. So yeah, they kind of repel your power beam shots if you do just that. But one more thing I should say on that issue right there is that... I believe the the conversation that I just had, or what I just said, is kind of independent, at least for my purposes of me discussing it, was independent of how Samus' character is portrayed in this game. I was talking about it merely from a design perspective, of what I believe the actual character's design kind of conveys and what it is. I understand that the context of that can change um, in the context, well, I, I guess just the understanding could change, within the context of how Samus is characterized in this game, specifically with her relationship with Adam. I'm still kind of holding off as, okay, I can't take you down, apparently. I'm still holding off on talking about the character of Samus in this game and her relationship to Adam more in depth, because we just really have not uh, seen the major portions that I want to talk about uh, for right now. Okay, let's just go ahead and get in the morph ball for that. But I will be addressing that later, but just know that what I said right now, as far as it comes to, like, a sexualization type of thing, um, is independent of that uh, mechanic right there. So, okay, so in here... Actually, yeah, I definitely want to go to the save room right quick. <laughs> the navigation room. Because that was a bit of a tough fight, and I would like to get that all saved up. In fact, I believe backwards is not the direction that we want to go right now, because that brings us back to the main spire right there. Th right there, yeah, and that's not something that I really want to uh, deal with for the time being. So yeah, just keep that in mind, guys, because I understand that, like, the issues of, like, a relationship between uh, a man and a woman and the sexual- uh, the sexuality of, I guess it really is just a hot topic with women these days, not so much with men as it is. I understand those are sensitive issues, and that they can be, like, kind of hot-button political issues. And, uh, oh, look, really, I don't want to have that conversation. Like, I really just do not care, and I don't really care to make a statement on those types of conversations. But I just want to get that out there, and what my immediate thoughts of it are, independent of all that stuff. Okay, so what is this? Can I actually mess with this console right here? I forget. I think I want to go to the right. Yeah, I don't think we can do anything with this right now. Oh, well, we actually can. I can activate that. And lower the bridge, although I don't really know why I would want to do that. Yeah, that kind of leads to, like, an elevator, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to mess with that for right now. So it's going to be onward towards the right side of the path. So there are diverging paths in this game, which is why I don't think... Other M is definitely far more linear than any other Metroid game, although I think people claim that it's far more... Uh, they make the linearity out to be something that's far more worse than it actually is. And we can get to linearity later, I don't really exactly want to have that conversation. Uh, for right now, I want the game to kind of uh, explain things by itself for just a little bit longer, as I want to keep an eye on the wildlife around here, as they will give us a problem. Oh, yep, these guys right here, like piranhas or whatever. The wildlife will give us a problem if I do not take care of them right now, yeah, for sure. I don't know why it takes more than one power beam shot in order to take down a freaking piranha, but there we go. But yeah, I'm sure you guys have realized uh, so far, and like I said, I don't really want to have the in-depth conversation for right now, but you have noticed uh, so far that Other Rim is far more linear than any other type of Metroid game. And I would appreciate it if I could, I don't know, like maneuver around in water a bit more. You know, you know, if only we had something that would allow me to not hate water so much in a Metroid game. If you guys have watched any other of my Metroid playthroughs, starting with freaking Zero Mission, I believe, you know that I hate with a capital H, water and Metroid games. I just really hate crawling around without the gravity suit. But, Samus has the gravity suit feature right now. It's something that she has, so why am I not allowed to use it? And I don't think I can jump into there with the morph ball. I think I can just jump regularly, yeah, and then go into morph ball like that, yeah. That, that'll be how we get the missile tank right there. So this is another... This is another aspect where the authorization system makes literally zero sense. I've already gone over the justifications that they could have used in World and why they may, might work for things like the power bomb and the plasma beam. And that doesn't work for things like we already saw in the grapple beam back at the beginning of the biosphere, and especially here in the water with the gravity suit. Why can't she use the gravity suit? What type of danger would that pose? In fact, why isn't Samus walking around with the various suit? Yeah, we can pin this all on Adam and how it's stupid that Samus can't use the gravity suit right now, but why didn't she walk out of the freaking ship and not be using the various suit? I mean, it's just a flat boosted defense. What's... 
bad about not using it. And, I mean, in fact, like, why isn't that your default right now? In fact, that's something that the Prime series did pretty fantastically, as I'm going to look up here in first person and make sure to get all these little tentacle things hanging from the ceiling, as they will be quite problematic if I don't take care of them right now. So, uh, yeah, like in the first Prime, Samus came out and she was wearing the various suit, and you could tell by the shoulder pads right there because that made sense. Although, I guess if it truly made sense, she would be wearing the gravity suit, wouldn't it? So, okay, maybe, like, the suits that Samus herself choos chooses to wear, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Although, actually, since Prime was, at that time, a sequel to the original Metroid, and not actually Zero Mission, maybe that does make sense, as I don't believe that the gravity suit was in the original Metroid. Let's go ahead and take that down. I did not take down as many of the, as the tentacle plants that I wanted to. So, okay, maybe I'll admit my statement on Prime. Yeah, that's what they did. Because the gravity suit canonically did not happen as far as the developers at that time knew until Super Metroid, I believe. So yeah, Prime gets off the hook. So uh, I just don't know why Samus isn't wearing the various suit up here at front and why she's not wearing the gravity suit either or the gravity feature or whatever you want to call it because they do kind of a weird thing with that in this game. But that's just another example of why the authorization system does not work. And if they wanted it to work, well, you should have explained it better or you should have, should have had something different in its entirety. Again, why it's so freaking frustrating because it did not have to be authorization. It didn't. It could have been a multitude of other things. You could have pulled something out of your rear end and it would have been better than that, but I'm just getting sidetracked and ranting yet again. So this room right here is I haven't really talked about kind of like the overarching kind of like the room by room design of this game so far. I've just kind of been uh, more focused on other things that I wanted to talk about as it pertained to other room uh, itself really. But this room was actually where I got stuck the first time I was ever playing this game and I think it's because not the freaking piranhas, that's for sure. But it's because, um, I wasn't really using the first person feature to its full extent. And I'm not really gonna blame the game on this one. It was definitely me back in the day that wasn't fully looking around and taking my environments in with the first person view. But before we do that, let's kind of hide into this very discreet cubby over here. Go in there, Samus. Do I have to blow this thing up? I don't think I do. Why won't you go in? There we go. And we can go ahead and get the extra missile tank right there. Nice. Finally... Over freaking 20. That took long enough. I think I've missed a few here and there. Actually, I think I've only really missed that one uh, back at the beginning of the Biosphere. So yeah, what I'm talking about is that you really have to survey things in the first person mode because I never found this little deal right here. So I keep walking back and forth in this room and I'm being like, okay, what is going on, other room? Like, why can I not uh, progress past this freaking water room? I'm already pissed off because I don't like water in the Metroid series to begin with. It's such a huge hindrance and it already doesn't make sense that I'm not using the gravity suit. So why can't I progress past this area? And uh, it turns out it was my fault because I was not surveying around with the first person mode. I think there's a tendency my players in this game to only use the first person mode whenever they want to fire missiles or something like that. But honestly, you can go into first person mode at any time and just kind of look around the environment and just kind of soak it in and enjoy it. This is especially true for um, certain set pieces that we'll see earlier. I said set pieces, but they're more kind of like um, suspense filled areas and things like that, ones that are so dedicated to gameplay. You can really do that at any time and just kind of take in the environments. And it's actually kind of a treat to look at from time to time to go from one fixed perspective here when you're just kind of moving around in a third person view to the first person one. It can actually be a really interesting change of pace and sometimes you have to do it to progress like I did right there. Or if you don't, you'll be like me way back in the day. You'll be like 14 year old Virgo and not know what crap is going on in this game. But yeah, this is another area that I'm talking about right here. If I can take down these enemies, I can actually like survey this thing a bit. I'm just trying to missile this guy. And while we're at it, refill those missiles. That's what I need to do. But yeah, if you just look around a bit, I mean, I like this a lot. Let's take a look at that. And the terminal's all the way up. Uh, and yeah, I mean, look at this. this. This is clearly like a swampy, kind of grassy area. It's raining. They're taking a page out of Prime's book by having the raindrops on the visor of Samus. And I just love stuff like this. I think this is a really awesome atmospheric environment. And people say that, like, Other M misses the mark on a lot of core Metroid features. That's true. The linearity of it kind of prevents it from ever being... Uh, something that I really look forward to in a Metroid game or really look for in a classic Metroid experience. But as far as, like, atmosphere is concerned, as far as, like, mood is concerned, as far as things like building tension and building a sense of dread is concerned, I don't I don't think Other M really drops the ball on that at all, actually. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to find some kind of scaffolding that will allow me to get up to that terminal. I kind of forget which one, because they kind of all look the same. I know we have to kind of hip-hop between them pretty constantly, I think it's going to be this one right here, yeah. And I like this here too, this isn't really a problem solving, but it's more kind of like a platforming thing, where we just kind of have to figure it out in an environment like this. And also, the music, let me just sh shut up for like a second.
Okay, so yeah, that's not like a super uh, catchy theme that you're going to be able to like hum to yourself and that you can make a 10-hour loop on of YouTube and just kind of enjoy it over and over. Yeah, that's true. But I don't really see what people have against atmospheric pieces. I see that sometimes, like, oh, the music was too atmospheric. I couldn't really enjoy that. But people say that, and I thought the Metroid was all about the atmosphere. And granted, I can kind of see the flaw in the argument that I'm making right there, and it's that, well, Super Metroid was able to establish an atmosphere, they have really catchy tunes as well. Yeah, that's true as well, but I feel like Other M is going for a different mood, uh, as opposed to Super Metroid right here. Super Metroid did have kind of really distinct areas that you would be backtracking through really constantly, kind of back and forth and getting lost and things like that, whereas Other M is very much kind of about the, the straightforward, I'll live in the moment that you're not going to experience again kind of thing. And so, instead of the developers looking at this room and being like, okay, the player's gonna have to backtrack and revisit to this area over and over and over again. We have to make a catchy song. They can be like, okay, we're gonna have one specific instance where the player is in this area, and we want them to feel a certain atmosphere and things like that. At least I think that's kind of the logic behind the decision, and that's why I don't really mind it either. Plus, I just tend to like atmospheric music. <laughs>